Hi there guys, I hope you are having a good day. Grab yourself a cup of tea and let's talk about this football match between England and Italy. No, unfortunately, it didn't come home once again, but they got to the final, they got through extra time, and of course, what happened? Penalties happened once again. Now, I think that Jordan Pickford done incredibly well in our goal to save two penalties, and especially that Jorginho penalty when it was up to him to keep England in it, I mean, I know the next penalty was missed and then England obviously came second or lost the game, but still, that save was brilliant because it was all on the line and it was up to Jordan Pickford to keep England in it, and he got the save, so that was brilliant goalkeeping from him, and to be honest, when they went up, I thought that Italy's goalkeeper had a better chance of saving penalties, and I mean, I know he saved two and one was missed, but... Pickford done extremely well also. Now, I believe that the penalty takers Sancho and Rashford, I'm not entirely sure if they were on the pitch for long enough to kind of get into the game, because I would imagine that a penalty taker would want a little bit more time to warm into the game and to have that contest between him and the other players. I mean, they were on for all of two minutes, and then they were taking penalties. So I wonder if maybe they had maybe 15 minutes at least just to warm into the game. And I mean, it's weird how players who were brought on as substitutions were the ones who missed the penalties. I mean, obviously Sacco was on actually in playing time in the 90 minutes. And to be honest, it was a good save from the goalkeeper. And obviously Rashford hit the post and Jadon Sancho went the same way as Saka did. So it was just unfortunate, and we know how much of a pain penalties are for England. So when it does go to penalties, you have to wonder, what are the chances? Regardless of the fact that England do have some good penalty takers, but, I mean, it's just England with penalties. Now, aside from that, the actual game. I think that England played incredibly well in the first half, and... To be honest, Italy did not know what to do with England. They seemed to be bickering amongst themselves, they couldn't break through the defence, and when they tried to go wide, they still couldn't find anything. And it seemed like in the second half, they were able to cut in, and they had their way a lot more. Now, I'm not even convinced that that was down to Italy, I think that was down to England. I think England decided to protect what they had a little bit more, and to kind of sit behind the ball instead of go after it because what we have seen England do so well in the entire contest is press them high so to go after the ball and not allow them to string any passes together and build their way up the pitch so often they would win the ball high up in the opponent's half or they would just be able to make them make a wrong pass intercept it as they're trying to move forwards or even put it out for a throw in we've seen that happen a lot but in the second half of the final, that wasn't happening. I do also think that Sterling was quite quiet until later on. He did come alive, but earlier on in the first and second half, we didn't really see all that much of Sterling. I'm wondering if it's whether he was on the side with Trippier instead of on the side with Shaw, because there is a good relationship between Shaw and Sterling. We've seen that throughout this contest as well, throughout the tournament. But... He was on the opposite side with Trippier, I believe, in this game, and perhaps that didn't work so well for him after having that chemistry with Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw was good again, and Harry Maguire was good also. They played really well, it was just, they had that kind of lull in the middle, and it was around the second half, they did come on strong towards the end of playing time, and definitely in the second half of the extra time, England were the better team. It just seemed like they needed that spark to be able to go on and get the victory. Harry Kane was a menace in the first half, but his success in the first half didn't continue into the second. And, I mean, Italy did do well to adjust in the game as well, so it's not all down to what England didn't do well. Italy did win the game, and they done well really to come back from the first half because it looked really bad for Italy. I mean, going one goal down after two minutes... Perhaps that was a bit too early for England to take the lead because then they have a whole 88 minutes to try and look after that lead, especially if that is the game that they are going to play. Had they scored another maybe a little bit after and really pressed, then things could have been different. But 
regardless of that, Italy went one goal down after two minutes. They were arguing amongst themselves and it didn't seem like they could deal with the England team. So from that point onwards, it would have been very difficult for them to find their way back into the game. Regardless of that, I do believe that England were actually the better team. I do believe that they have the better players. Maybe experience was the difference between the two of them and fouls as well. Because let's not forget about that. The foul on Grealish, which is a red card. That is a red card. Studs up and no intention of getting the ball. And Jorginho just stayed down after like he was hurt. There was nothing wrong with him. He went to get up, then went straight back down again just because he didn't want to get a red card. That was just ridiculous. That is an instant red card. Then Chiellini on Saka, another probably red card. I mean, the guy's going to have a clear run through behind the defenders. Imagine what he's going to be able to do if he gets behind them. We've seen what Saka is able to do when he does that. Grabs hold of his shirt from behind, pulls him back. How is that not a red card? So Italy did have that luck, I guess, with the referee when a few calls went their way. I'm sorry, you just can't tell me that if someone goes in with their studs up like Jorginho did, that that is not a red card. And when a player is through, I mean, it's not central, no, but he is through. He's past the defenders. He can then try and cut in, maybe cross it across and maybe Kane's coming in, maybe Sterling's coming in. That is a great opportunity for England, yet he's just yanked him back. So from a genuine goal scoring opportunity, because as I said, we've seen what Saka is able to do. When he gets behind the defence, he's very fast and he makes good decisions usually when he's in that kind of position. So they're going to hurt Italy in that situation. What does Chiellini do? He makes a decision. You can see how happy he is that he didn't get a red card because even he would have been expecting that to happen. That being said, we can talk about what should have been, what could have been and what England could have done differently. But I guess they made it to a major final. The World Cup next year, England are only going to get better, especially with that kind of experience, World Cup semi-final in 2018 and final of the Euros 2020 in 2021, then the World Cup in 2022. You would imagine that maybe England can push on from here and perhaps go one step further because semi-final then final didn't win the final but next time perhaps they do get to the final and maybe they do win and finally it does come home. I mean, it could be easy to lose faith, but it is a young England team and the one thing they can do extremely well is they can switch and take out players, bring new players in, yet the team is still of high quality. So take out someone like Sancho, put in Mason Mount, still a top team, then Grealish coming in as well. Henderson, Rice in the middle and the defence as well. They were strong. We only conceded two goals in the entire tournament and one was against Italy, one was against Denmark. Aside from that, no goals got past Jordan Pickford who was very strong in goal as well. I mean, there are some talks about his decision making and perhaps some jitters in goal for Everton but we haven't seen that in goal for England. He has been strong and he's always trying to organise the defence as well, and trying to rally them. I mean, Maguire does extremely well to set up the defence as well. I mean, he's not captain, but he is a natural leader, so he does set up that defence very well. Kane is a great leader up the front as well. So I do think the future is very bright for this England team, and while they did not win, they did get to the final, and that does show progress from a semi in the World Cup, final this time, maybe next time they can go all the way. I just think that had they stuck to their game and not decided to look after that one goal, maybe things could have been different. But the only thing they can do is learn from it and I'm sure that they will do. This is the best chance we have in years at winning a major tournament and while it did not come off this time, I believe that in the coming years it can happen. So that's why every England fan is going to be saying it's coming home once again. Yes, they lost on penalties, but next time around, let's hope they can go all the way. Anyway, guys, what are your thoughts on this? Make sure you leave your thoughts in the comments below. Also leave a like and grab that subscribe button. Thanks, guys.